I would like to welcome you all to Core Voices. This is your space, our space, to talk about the things that are difficult, things that we can't always talk about in every environment, to ask the questions that we might be afraid to ask, um, or just even to step up and give each other support. That is the whole purpose of Core Voices, to reach to our core voices inside. This is a space that is welcome to people of all genders, all communities, all backgrounds, and all circumstances, whatever you're going through, please reach out to us and let us be here as a support for you. You can reach out to us by supporting our website initiative, corevoices.org. You can email me at corevoices at gmail.com and I will ask all of you, if you are not already, please go and follow and support Core Voices on Instagram and on Facebook. Your support makes the work that we do possible and we're trying to bring change. We're trying to bring positive conversations and positive change in our community that can actually support us as we grow as a gom, as a community, as a sangat. I want to welcome everybody else who's just popped into the comments from Toronto, from Canada, from Surrey, BC. Thank you. Without further ado, I want to introduce today's guest, a beautiful dear sister of mine, Gurpreet Kaur. She started an Instagram page called The Core Movement, which has gone viral. She started this initiative in February 2019 to bring awareness to the abuse that was taking place in our homes and in our communities that we don't talk about because of the shame, because of the lack of support and the lack of understanding. So today, this is what we're going to be talking about. It's not an easy topic, but if you've got questions and you want to show your love and your support, you know to pop that into the comments. And I would like you to help me, welcome, join me in welcoming Gurpreet Kaur to Core Voices. Welcome, Gurpreet. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for being in this space with us today for Core Voices. I'm actually excited for this. <laughs> I'm so grateful. It's the work that you're doing is so admirable um, and it really, it tunes in perfectly with core voices. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm hoping that at the end of this conversation, it's not just going to be a conversation, but we'll be able to bring both of these organizations and these movements together to actually bring substantial change in our community. Exactly. Having it together, doing everything together as a community, it obviously makes it a lot bigger than what it is right now. So us supporting each other, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. I'm just having a little bit of a technical thing, but the first question that I would like to ask you is what caused you to start the core movement? So I started this last year in February and I decided to talk about sexual abuse within families that was the main conversation when i started this and this was because i realized there was not enough um like social media places there was not enough support groups for just south asian community like <clears throat> so i was like hey we need to come forward and start talking about this nobody talks about it in families nobody really mentions it but i've had a lot of people come to me separately asking for help because I used to be a support worker like I used to work in fields for like six seven years that's what I did and then I was like one day I just sat there and was like hey I need to start a, a platform where people can come share their stories because there's so many but how come none of these people are being heard because the law when they go to the law and they report something um there's not much that is done when it comes to molestation when it gets to comes to sexual abuse because it's so hard to prove it. So for me, I was like, hey, I want people to start healing from their um, trauma and just talk about their experience and make it as a support group. That is incredible. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that you, you started this work and created this space. Thanks. Was there any particular... Was there any particular incident or moment that became the catalyst for you to actually take the step? Um, so obviously I had my own experience with sexual abuse um, within family members. So 
pretty much my cousin and another a couple I had four incidents and when I came forward when I got older because this happened to me when I was very young when I came forward with it I didn't get the support that I wanted um I wasn't getting heard I was more told like what are other people gonna say let's keep it a family matter and I didn't know that my childhood trauma had affected my future like my future relationships my like with friends peers everything it was affecting me and then I was like then I decided to go out of the way to actually report my abuser and when I went there I did not get the support I needed the policing the way it was done was I had to go in for three hours talk about my abuse go through all that trauma again deal with it talk about it and then a month later be told hey sorry we can't proceed with this any further because there's no proof so i was just shut down and after that all they told me was oh um you have victim support services that you can call if you need any support so i didn't get support from family members i didn't get support well i did get support from my parents but it was down to the understanding of like hey let it go like it's already happened. Um, why are we bringing this up? And but then I'm Hojaniya, and we shouldn't be talking about it. I'm like, why is it embarrassing for me? The abuser should be the one that's embarrassed. So that's when I kind of started getting angry about it. And when I started getting angry, one day in the middle of the night at like 2 a.m., I had a huge breakdown, and I was like, you know what? The cops aren't doing anything. These people are all getting away with it. Like that's why there's so many issues that are coming forward when it comes to sexual. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna open a page. I opened it up literally within three days. I started getting so many emails about the similar stories, and I was like, oh my god, this is my support group this is actually helping me heal and that's how it actually started it actually the page started for myself like it was my healing and then from there i guess it was just strength and like raising awareness together and then it just i actually healed and i'm like hey now i'm gonna help other people heal and i know how it feels to be alone so i want to make sure that nobody is alone whoever contacts me so they have the support they need yeah wow that's so so brave of you because there's a lot of barriers in our community in the south asian community that prevent women from coming forward and what what you were faced with with your parents that what are people going to say and the but the nami the shame is going to be on us right this was the mentality and it's it's like that communal mentality Anna. um mm -hmm. and it's how we, we judge each other so our parents are conditioned to that so yeah it's, so, it's really difficult yeah it is I, w I was lucky in a sense of like my parents supported me they were like hey what do you need what kind of support do you need but oh. i wanted to confront the abuser i wanted to create a scene i wanted to be like hey you did this now people should know what you did because at least you won't do it to someone else people always think that that abuser only has abused one person but usually if they've abused you they've abused another person so then it continues because they've gotten away with it right so my other thing like why i have to see that same abuser at foundations why do i have to say sasri call to that person for formality reasons why is that in our community because like we don't want other people to know that we're not talking to that individual so i have to fake with my abuser and be like hey how's it going when actually you molested me when i was like six seven years old so how is that fair to me that person yeah they're they're living the life right now they get to pretend like nothing has happened i'm the one dealing with the trauma that's how it goes for all the victims on my page they're the ones dealing with the trauma but nobody understands them they're more worried about other people and other people and how the society is gonna think they're not worried about the child and what that child is facing right yeah this is a massive issue and it is I'm grateful to have this conversation with you for the first time because this was the whole reason that Core Voices began. Um, yeah. And it was really close to the, sorry, here we go with my technical issues again. Excuse me just for a moment. Um, <laughs> it was my own um, experiences through the Me Too movement that triggered, um, that triggered the whole... Um, the thought process between where is the space in the South Asian community for for us to come forward as survivors of sexual abuse. Now, 
One yeah. truth, a fact that I'm just going to drop out there is that everybody who's tuning in and everybody who listens to this or watches this on different platforms, I guarantee there's not a single woman in your life who has never had any form of a sexually abusive experience, even if it's a man just staring at her chest instead of looking into her eyes or making a derogatory comment. Every single woman that I know in my life has had some form of an experience. And yeah. when I was speaking to my my aunts in India or my nanny in India, and they were like, this is just normal. This is what men do. So we, we stay away from it. Right. So I'm saying like, why is it our responsibility to stay away? Why is it our responsibility to be covered? That like, that's not how it should be. It's the purity that a human has in themselves where it's like, hey, that's not the way I'm going to think. That's not the way I'm going to react. I'm not going to touch someone inappropriately. It is not okay. But instead we're told, the women are told to be quiet. The women are told to not laugh at la out loud or hey you're showing that you're flirting with the individual when you, all you're doing is, is laughing and having a good time so there's always these things like for example even cleavage like we're told to hide it like like no like we're just like hey hide it cover like the neta changani lagda like this doesn't look good why is that it's our human body. So am I telling a guy to put on shorts and cover himself up completely so I don't see what's going on down there? No, it's our human body. Realize that and be okay with that. And just making it as a like, hey, we're supposed to be secure just because we have, let's just say, a bigger chest, a bigger back, like any of that. Then we're told to make it shrink it. Like, yo, so it doesn't look good. There's so many issues that like come forward like this i'm just like this is what god has given us it's that's just how it is the human body and now we've made it as like a toy like where we disrespect it or we tell someone like no oh, you're not okay this is not okay this you make someone feel like not wanted or like embarrassed to have something that the god like god gave you so that's what sometimes it confuses me where i'm just like i don't get it it just doesn't make sense to me like why people yeah. do that I agree with you that we objectify the body and women are always the ones to blame. So somebody put in the comments that it, how hard is it to just wear a small secret camera so that you can catch the abuser? I'm sorry, but that's just not practical. <laughs> <laughs> a on. lot of people, sometimes like when trauma happens, you, people say like hey why didn't you react a certain way why didn't you hit the person at that time when your own loved one when your own like usually the abusers 99 percent of the chance the abusers are a family member or a relative or a cousin or someone that you know so when something like that happens it's shocking first of all you freeze you're just like uh this is my brother this is supposed to be my mama this is supposed to be my uncle like what are they doing to me right now? We freeze. When it's a traumatic experience, we freeze. So we can't expect someone to just pull out a camera and then be like, hey, record this. Like, are we supposed to have that on ourselves all the time? How come we do not feel safe in our own house? Our own parents, like, keep us in this house to keep us safe. But then we're letting people enter in that are mom, me, thai, and we think that they're okay. They're not going to do anything to the child, but they do. Most, some of them do. And we have to be aware of that. And we have to make sure that at least at the, till the age of 18, your child, you know, where your child is, where they're sitting, where, what they're doing. Cause those are the ages where you're more vulnerable. Those are the ages where something can happen. Right. And those are like most of the stories. Like if you see on my page, when I was seven, when I was eight, when I was 11, like this happened. You were unsupervised, you were left somewhere. And yes, I understand like, hey, that's your mama, that's your taya, that's your loved ones and your family. But we mm -hmm. sometimes need to realize like, not everyone has a good heart. Not everyone has like, they'll show you a face, they'll show you something, but they're completely different inside. So we have to be aware of that. And yeah, some kids do get mad and they're like, oh, I can't go for a sleepover. But you rather be more cautious than be sorry after, after an incident happens. So do you find that most of the stories that are being shared on your page are incidents that take place in the family? Most of them. 
most of them are always in the family my cousin did this to me my taya did this to me my mama did this my masi was knew what happened and she hid it because she didn't want anyone knowing like it's always within family a cousin touching you and it's very common it's like teach your kids to have a safe touch like understand those stuff we don't educate our kids I'll tell you one thing my parents didn't tell me at age 7 to like 18 or whatever that what good touch bad touches like mm. we don't in our community we don't talk about it we just are expected to just know and like and if we deal with it we don't know what to do so we need to educate ourselves and the children right yeah um i i love the support from our viewers as well they you know they're agreeing that the comment that you made about parents needing to know where their children are even while they're within the home you know is an important thing it's often something we take for granted because we think that that's a safe space and um through my own experiences there is no safe space and and just like you're sharing it's unfortunately it's very common we just haven't had um an uprising of women being able or even men in our community being able to come forward with their stories because the usually the first thing you're met with is victim blaming or some sort yeah. of like uh, are you exaggerating are you just looking for attention you know if that really happened why didn't you report it right but that, how how do you that's when i say education is so important and over top of that when someone is forward to you like for example if your friend is coming to you and telling you hey what happened to me we most of the people in our community don't know how to react to that first thing oh. is why did you do something we're losing your audio so you're telling thing oh no sorry i think the connection Let me know when you, you hear me. me. Yes, we can hear you. Am I back? Okay. Yes. Can I go along with my lecture now? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so pretty much what I was saying is, um what was I saying? I was saying something. Yeah, so I was saying that we need to be more educated in these matters of like hey, like this stuff does happen in our households when we tell our kids and our like our kids get together, all the mossies, mommies, kids get together and we have sleepovers and we all put all the kids into one room. You expect like the other child is not going to do anything to the other child. Like the cousin won't touch the other cousin, but hey, it happens. So like separate people a little bit. Like have that distance like I know the girls and boys they're all cousins and everything and we say that they're not going to do something but if you're not educated and the kids don't know good touch bad touch they start experimenting they do mm. I have so many scenarios like that where like people have come forward like yeah, I didn't even know so we were experimenting so mm. like then it become one person is getting assaulted the other person is just trying to understand the human body like it becomes really it all comes down to education and knowledge and that what we have to tell our kids from a certain age and we talk about it hey we're not supposed to talk about sex education it's embarrassing we don't talk about condoms we don't talk about things that are necessary to talk about with our children but we think like we can hide it from like them but they are going to find out one way or another wouldn't you rather have it through you wouldn't you rather educate them yourselves before some other random stranger does it for you mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. I, i agree with you education is definitely the way but i think for us in this space like you've been doing this like you've been fully immersed for the last year and a half right so for you you're past the awareness and you're into the education but from where i'm sitting and i look at the whole of our community globally there's still a lot of awareness because a lot of our community is still in denial that this happens and this exists and that it could happen within their family um and I'm, they won't, I, I'm like they won't believe it that's just our community i that's what i've realized at this point where they're like oh these stories are fake how could this happen why did this person do this questioning the person cuz they haven't gone through it themselves unless you experience something like this yourself you will not fully understand what the other person is going through you can listen you can judge in your brain but at the end of the day stop judging stop asking questions to the victim and making them feel more victimized and just listen 
if you don't haven't experienced it don't judge them for what they have been through that's a trauma they dealt with learn how to listen and learn how to be there to support instead of judging and then another thing in our community is to believe and gossip so if a person has come forward to you and shared something traumatic with you actually support the person and keep that confidential don't go around telling other cousins like hey guess what this 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 you're traumatizing the victim even more they're going to feel more embarrassed cuz in our community we're told like this is embarrassing this is not okay like someone touched you nobody's going to get marry you anymore someone raped you nobody's going to marry you anymore like make sure this is mm-hmm. silent So these are the things that we need to realize like how it affects the victim and how they feel so embarrassed that they don't even talk about it so they keep it inside their head. And that's the worst thing. When you keep a trauma inside your head and you don't talk about your trauma, that's when it starts affecting you mentally and you get into depression and anxiety and all of that stuff happens. So that's why my page when people come forward and start start talking, a lot of them cry. A lot of them cry on the phone. A lot of them cry reading the support that they're getting. They're like, "Oh my god, I needed this. I didn't even know how much I needed the support from strangers because my own family didn't give it to me." Mm. Wow, that's so powerful. That's so powerful. And yeah. I just want to reflect on a few of the things that you said is as as a community, as supporters or allies to survivors, our job is to create a space of listening that's safe for them not to judge them not to interrogate them with a ton of other questions like when did it happen who did this how did it happen why didn't you do anything because those are the things we think logically but emotionally they don't help the situation now how many stories have you had submitted onto your page because you you your page is like almost 70,000 followers now Yeah, I think I only have posted 191, but um I get I have about like 15,000 emails that I've responded to at least at least 15,000 in the past year and a half. And a lot of them um they're not posting them up. They're not um they're just asking for help and support services. In the beginning last year, I think I was responding to 30 emails a day. Um and there were like I need or i would just talk to them i, I didn't have to po- i didn't like time to post those stories up and now like i only post if they told me to post or other than that i just but um another way of healing is by sharing so people that decide to do that that's the stories i post up but there's several there's 191 on the page but overall i would say there's over like 3000 i could have posted yeah wow that's that's horrifying yeah so i mean I, i'm glad how- sorry i was just going to say i'm glad that these people are reaching out and talking about their stories and they've got a space like the core movement that enables them to have their voice and their story heard so thank you for doing that but i'm just like i can't believe that there's so many but there's probably so many more that haven't had the chance to come forward yet exactly like right now on i have about 300 and like 10 emails to respond to and i'm still in the june emails so like and it's just me handling all of these and it does become like shocking like how many people are coming forward but at this time i'm so numb to it because i've heard so many that i'm just like hey how i understand that you have gone through this i understand your pain but how are we going to help you for the future my mm-hmm. thing is like how are you going to heal the trauma has already happened it's already dealt with it's in the past what are you going to do for yourself now to start healing so that's more awareness as well um educating themselves about counseling because again in our community we do not bring up counseling if we hurt ourselves if if we break a bone or something everyone's like calling you up and oh are you okay are you good but when it comes to mental health everything in our community is kind of ignored so that is a main factor as well where the kids or like even the older generation because a lot of these stories are people that are like 30 or 40 years old now coming forward with their stories that happened to them when they were 14 5 years old or whatever it is right so they don't believe in counseling but then when they actually share their story on the page and then i connect them with someone then they're like oh, wow this has actually helped me i'm not having nightmares at night now or like things like that cuz these traumatic experiences does affect you like i yeah. till this day still have nightmares 
I still this day still wake up in the middle of the night sometimes um, shaking because I remember the same incident that happened to me as a child. So it does come forward. It's not something that can like leave its rest of your life. But how are we going to adjust with it? How are we going to heal? How are we going to be happy and make sure our, like our happiness is more important than what has happened to us? So that's another thing. It's about more happiness. Because a lot of people on my page are like, I tried to commit suicide. I've, um, I'm depressed. I don't talk to anyone. I want them out of that phase. I mm. want them to be happy and like living, live once. And like, if we're just stressed about one trauma, because we don't know, like we don't educate ourselves in like how we can help ourselves. And we're more worried about other people that's when it comes that's when i'm just like yo we need to start talking we need to start healing and that's how our future generation is gonna be okay our future generation, the victims will decrease they won't there won't be more numbers because i don't want the numbers i want on my page right now i want them to be less i don't want them to be more so the more educated the more victims are going to decrease and we'll have survivors and more knowledge to spread right Absolutely. You're so brave. I'm so proud of you as an older sister that, you know, you've got the courage to come forward because, as I said, we've all got our experiences and I've never really talked about it. But, you know, my first experience of sexual abuse was when I was nine years old. And there have been others during, you know, my my teens and in my adult life as well. But I was never able to talk about it. And now, you know, I'm sitting in my mid-30s. Now I can talk about it because I'm not ashamed of it and I've healed. And getting therapy is so important. No. Is nothing to be embarrassed about. Is nothing to be ashamed of. It's a tool to help you deal with the trauma that you're carrying. And for me, the therapy that I used was using sick music. So that's my practice. And um I try to share that with other people for the exact same reason that you do what you do is to help all survivors, male and female, to come through and be able to feel joy again and not feel guilty living their life and being comfortable, being able to trust people and have healthy relationships because often the trauma that you carry that is of this nature of a sexual abuse it affects all your relationships. Are you still with us, Gurpreet? Oh, no. It does. It does affect all the relationships, everything. And let me be sure that trauma does not define us. It doesn't define us. Don't be putting us ourselves low, seem low, just because we've gone through a trauma. Like, right? Yeah. And the strength to go forward. Your strength right now to talk about this, which is such a big counseling and what you're saying is so important and I want everyone to be able to hear it but your connection's a little bit um it's a little bit dodgy at the moment (laughs) is it better now your voice is cutting in and out and I just want everyone to be able to hear everything you're saying so if you wouldn't mind repeating so I was just saying that, like, for example, you had the strength to come forward with your story. You had the strength to, like, go talk to someone about it and actually get help and put yourself first, right? So that's what's necessary. That's what I feel like a true Sharni kind of is. Being able to understand, like, this is my trauma that I have dealt with, and now I'm going to help myself. And maybe people are going to judge. Let them judge. Who cares? The parents are going to say stuff like, you don't need help or whatever it is let them but you went out of your way to help yourself and that's what i want to make sure like everyone else does too like go help yourself put don't put yourself down you deserve the love and respect so don't like put stop putting yourself down and stop worrying about other family members and other people because at the end of the day you're gonna die alone at the end of the day on that bed when you're older you're gonna be by yourself dying. you're not gonna die with someone holding your hand so build that courage up build that strength up and be able to like be happy alone like you we always ask for support yes i'm here to give support yes everyone will support the victims but at the end of the day you're the one going to sleep by yourself alone you're the one that's going taking a shower by yourself if you're having anxiety at the time know what you can do to help yourself because at that Mm. time we we won't be there but how are you going to help yourself right so these are like the big 
yeah that come forward like we have to educate how our body works and what triggers it and when you know what triggers it stay away from it right. like i know like if you want to your abuser at a foundation have the guts to say no to your parents and be like hey i'm not going i don't want to go i don't feel comfortable going or if you want to go own it and go and hey i i can go i why am i the only one embarrassed right that's where it has to come down to where it's like hey it's not the victim's fault it's the perpetrator that did this to you so it should be their issue and it's not yours but yeah. i think for some some girls that can be really difficult because um if you haven't told your parents or exactly. the people around you that something like this has happened your parents will force you to go there and if you're afraid you could end up being in that situation again and you know often times you know people who are in the situation repeatedly they just freeze and yeah. it's it, it's very I'm painful like, very difficult yeah i have used to happen to me once but it happened to me two three four five six times as a child like when i was younger the same person did the same thing over and over again and i was silent those years so i understand because it's not easy to go to your parents and tell them what they happened because we don't know how they're going to react and a lot of females for example they're really emotionally more they think more emotionally so they'll be more worried about like hey i don't trust my parents out hey i don't want to stress anybody out with what has happened i don't want to cause drama so they keep it inside them and that's when it becomes worse that's when mm -hmm. it becomes more mental health and that's when it becomes like hey why are you angry at certain things when you're not supposed to be angry why are your relationships not working out properly because you have trust issues or like anxiety while you're with that other person but sometimes like let's just say he's like someone touched you inappropriately and grabbed your neck at that time so if your loved one is putting their hand around here or like touching you around here sometimes it triggers that person mm -hmm. and they don't realize it until it actually happens so these are the things that need to be brought up because we don't want it affecting our future relationships it's already mm -hmm. affected us as a child why ruin our life even more so that's when hey again counseling comes in play yes I, I agree with you. I 100% agree with everything you're saying. A lot of people, like I was just reading some of the comments, they're saying, why are we uh, supporting therapy when we should be going out there to catch the perpetrators by, you know, wearing cameras for people who are repeat offenders? And like, I, I think that there's a huge disconnect in how men, and this is evidence of it, how men in our community see this issue and how it's so far disconnected from the female or the survivor's experience. When you're on the receiving end of sexual abuse, things are not so straight cut. Yeah, exactly. Oh, tell me about it. I've caught a lot of abusers. I love doing it. Um, like, you know, that like even in the industry, um, people might hate me for it. But guess what? Now they're going to think twice before making a wrong wrong step it's especially people that have a lot of influence like they have a lot of influence on a lot of people and if they're abusing the power why aren't we as a community taking a stand why am i the only one doing this right now why isn't there more people why where's the men in this like i want the men like let me just say i've named like three people on my page right now that are abusers that are public that do songs and whatnot why hasn't someone questioned those people the cops aren't doing anything because guess what? There's not enough evidence. There's not enough proof. Um, the victims are too scared to go forward. But where are these men and women that say, hey, like we have the power to do this. Why aren't you guys taking that stuff and doing something about it? I am. I can say I am. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to raise awareness. But then people question me like I'm doing it for fame. I wish I am doing it for fame. I want this to be as big as possible. I want everyone to know my face and be scared. I want everyone to like, all, especially this is for the abusers, like be scared. Mm -hmm. Like I will expose when I have proof. I do not care about anything in that matter because to me, victims do matter. Their voices do matter. And if people are abusing their power, it's not about calling out a celebrity. It's calling out another human. I don't care what job you have. I don't care what you do. But if you yourself are like hurting someone else, and doing it with like a power abuse that is completely wrong and it needs to be changed like we have to like take a stand for this stuff right i understand like women like in the industry for example a lot of people consent a lot of people know so we can't say anything to them 
Like they consented and proceeded with whoever they wanted to proceed with, right? But at the end of the day, but the girls, the young girls that are going into the industry and are not aware about what's happening. This is mm -hmm. that's the knowledge that I'm giving them. I'm not here to take their job away. That's their work. That's that's how they earn, right? My job is, hey, I spread awareness about like, this is guy's a perpetrator. So make sure that you're aware. Go work with him if you want to. That's not my, I don't want him fired or anything. I don't care. My job was to aware, like put awareness out there that this is what has been happening. And let's hope that he doesn't continue now. Right? right so that's down to for me it's like stopping it and darpa they're not the mag the bitch now he'll think twice before making a step now he'll be signing the contracts now he'll be thinking before doing something because guess what he just got exposed so things like this we need to do this exposing stuff because the police aren't doing it are the police giving us a list and writing hey like this victim has come forward of this perpetrator no so we, we as a community should start doing it because it's the truth yeah. Do you want more children getting affected? No, we need to like put this forward. And, and yeah, that's what I feel like. I, there's no doubt. There's nothing to be scared about when we talk about the truth. If you're lying, if I was lying, then I would be scared, right? But mm -hmm. if I'm speaking the truth, I don't care. Like at the end of the day, I'm saving someone's life. I'm, yeah. I'm saving another victim. Because there was many victims that were, I mean, many girls that were going to go forward with that one person. But now they backed off. So guess what? Like I just saved something from something from happening, right? And yeah. us as a community can do this and make it even more stronger if we do it together. Absolutely. And I don't think that what you're calling fame is fame. What you're doing is the right thing. And it takes so much courage. That's the spirit of Sikhi that the gurus gave to us, right? To Sings and to Gars, to be able to step forward and do the right thing. And when you don't see anybody else, fighting your fight for you, that's when we step into the battlefield, right? Yep. And I love the fact that it's called the Gar movement because it's time for women to step forward and be the ones to protect our spaces and make them safe again. So I'm glad that you chose that name, but do you ever get any um, criticism for that name? Oh yeah, um, I get a lot of um, Amartari people messaging me and being like, hey, you're not a core. You don't have, you don't, you're not Amartari. So why are you like doing this? Mm -hmm. So my answer to that is I am a core. I'm a, like, I'm born in a Sikh family and you guys can't take that away from me. So just because you think that you have to be Amartari for that, that's your thinking. I think that's hankar. That's more ego in them that they feel like that. But um, um, a core can be anyone you don't put someone else down just because a person's not baptized so let me just say like we're allowed to go to the go to the water we're allowed to go to the temple and i'm not baptized and i'm still defining myself as a core and that's gonna continue so the for the people that say that it kind of makes me laugh because they feel like they're more superior for some reason just because they're amritari because most mm -hmm. of them are amritari that come forward and say this to me and it's, it's sad to see because it's like I'm doing something good. I'm doing something proper. But you guys are going to ignore all that and be like, hey, she has a haircut and she puts makeup on. Great. Yeah, I it's a shame. <laughs> and I like my hair the way it is. So that's not going to stop from like changing the movement's name now just because right. I feel like I need to be Amritari to have a core movement. You're beautiful just the way that you are, okay? Yeah. And Sikhi is something that lives in your heart, not on, on your exterior. We practice in different ways, and that's that's the beauty of Sikhi, okay? Yeah. But I, I love that you tapped into that fire and that courage of Sikhi to name this movement, okay? Because you, you could have called it anything, but you called it the God movement, and I appreciate that because there's a lot of people across the world, the Sikh diaspora, wherever they're placed, that identify as being Singh and God, right? Whatever their relationship may be with Sikhi, there's nobody out there who has the right to measure and quantify how much of a Sikh you are because only Guru has the capacity to do that. The work that you're doing is the work of a God, is to step into the front line saying, it's okay, I'm ready to take all of the backlash, all of the negativity that comes with this to expose people and to share these stories is not easy, Gurpreet. And you know this. I'm glad that you're doing this. Um, 
I want to just address a few people who said some things in the comments because it's easy to to speculate and to say, oh, ideally you should do this or you should carry a weapon. Somebody said that um, protect your children up until the age of 10 and then after 10 or make them carry panic alarms and then make them amratari so that they carry karpans. I'm, I'm so sorry, but that's completely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would you like to respond to that, Gurpreet? I don't have no comment. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, like, oh gosh, this is um, this there's a practicality to this which is not plausible in what you're saying. Like, life is real. Okay, you can't just go and like chastise all of your 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 children and say okay you're gonna stay celibate and we're gonna make sure that there's no interaction between opposite sex it used to be like this and things were very strict back in the day but we live in a more liberal world and we have to update our safety measures for our families and for our communities as well and what i understand is like a lot of people say like become amritari and all of that right and it, it'll stop most of the abuses that happen that have come forward to me, the victims, it's happened at a gurdwara, at a temple, where Amritari Banda or a Baba or whoever he is has touched a child in those playrooms. Or there's so many stories like that where in temples all of this stuff happens and they're Amritari people and they're abusing their power because they're Amritari. So they have this, um, like you know, image, but they're doing wrong things with that. So it's mm -hmm. not a what religion, what caste, what gender you are. It's you as a human and how you are. So it doesn't matter what you're wearing, what, how religious you can be. That does not mean that you're still human at the end of the day. You can you can still be a perpetrator. And mm -hmm. I've caught many babbe at Gordwaras. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, a 14-year-old mm -hmm. came forward to me. A 19-year-old girl came forward to me. Um, a 23-year-old girl has come forward to me and said, hey, I was sexually assaulted in a Punjabi class. I was sexually assaulted in a temple. And that's supposed to be our safe place. So what do we have to say about that now? So those people are Amritari too. That does not matter. It's what you are inside as a human. It's what you, the good in you, the purity in you. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. I can wear, I can right now literally pretend like I'm Amritari, put it all up and people will be like, hey, she's Amritari and she's proper. But I can go do a crime and use that as a defense. Hey, like I'm religious. That like I can't do that. That's not how it works. People think I, that, that works. It doesn't. I agree with you. And this is why I called the idea of that ridiculous and why I laughed because I don't know what else to do. There's nothing in that which is practical or empathetic to the situation, right? We need to re-educate the, the men in our community because like you said at the beginning, it's women that are taught, don't dress this way, don't be in this place, don't do this, don't do that, protect yourself and cover yourself up and don't wear makeup, don't look attractive. If, you, if your body is voluptuous, try to somehow hide it, right? And we're taught to stay in the shadows, yet we, are, we still get targeted. We still get targeted. Our young children, our young women, our young men, they all get targeted. And the perpetrators exist in plain sight, as you've helped us to understand that they're in our families, they're in our communities, they're in our religious spaces. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. They are everywhere. When you're trying to advance in your career, you're going to come across them. And people use their position of power to manipulate women and men the more leeway they have with a lot of things so the more power someone has they have more control and they can do more so the people that are in the powerful area you think they don't commit the crimes most of them do that's what i've noticed at least through my page the most powerful people are the most messed up ones and because cool. they've had that power for so long and then they abuse it by like targeting vulnerable women women mm -hmm. men a, a lot like it's just not women that get targeted a lot of men are targeted in our in our community men can't even talk about it if someone has touched you in a sexual way or made you feel uncomfortable a man's not gonna in our community a man's not gonna come forward and talk about it right. that's even worse mm -hmm. that's like hey why are you being such a janani why are you talking like why are you man up 
like mm -hmm. who cares if a female touched you or who cares if this guy did this to you be a banda that needs to be changed like that's not okay why are men committing more suicide why because you know what they don't even like get help for mental health issues mm -hmm. they have so much stress on them to provide for the family and all of that and then all this abuse stuff comes all in line the kids or the men or the boys in our community see the abuse happening and then they just feel like hey this is okay and then we we are going to continue so then they mm -hmm. become abusers themselves mm -hmm. they've experienced it as children when they were younger like hey my dad used to hit my mom so it's okay yep. for me to do it here and there that's fine because that's mm -hmm. what so you can't even blame that child that has turned 26 27 now and is harming another person because that's how we were raised in our community or in our environment so like mm -hmm. it's all a cycle. and it's like we don't talk about it we don't talk about domestic abuse we say it's karda matter we say lokan de gal karnia. we need to save the family we can't have a divorce mm -hmm. um alcohol oh it's whatever it's all a good deal like guys drink it's okay if the, he hits her a couple of times it's okay if he's drunk like all day all night that stuff is not okay that affects the children and it affects a lot of things and future relationships so again education comes in play wow i 100 percent agree with you we normalize the behavior and i think that we've we've been through so many different stages of evolution as a as a global community of south asians that we're now in a space where we can talk about this without shame without feeling like you know something bad is going to happen to us there there are still a lot of victims who need that support they need the strength to be able to come forward with their stories and enter that space of healing i'd like to ask you are there like, is there one particular case that stands out to you that you would be able to share with us that's that's been sent to you at the core movement? Um, well, the big ones that came forward were really mentally draining for me. So pretty much when there was like 30 victims coming forward with just one abuser, that was a big toll um, because so many victims were coming forward with the same same abuser and that abuser is roaming on freely right now so it's really stressful to like i feel sometimes helpless because i'm not able to do anything in a matter like and not because my voice can't be louder than the victim's voice at the end of the day i can be there for support i can be there to help you i can guide you i can go with you i can be with you when you're telling a family member and all of that but at the end of the day it's all up to you and how further you want to take the matter when it comes to police and all of that like reporting it mm -hmm. but i would say the first case when i started this last year was calgary girl there was a girl in calgary that um came forward and she was sexually assaulted actually raped by her employer at that time and i had so many emails i didn't see her emails till three days in so i could have um given her the knowledge of like hey you could have done a rape kit and uh, then it would have been evidence and all of that. So I felt very guilty that I wasn't able to respond right away. And that did affect me mentally as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I was kind of all over the place. I wasn't sleeping. I was like, hey, what can I do now? Like, and I took it very personally. And I tried to like, I defamed the person, obviously. I got mm -hmm. it handled where I got other people in Calgary co to go deal with that man. But um meaning in a civilized way just talk and whatnot and other things but i won't mention that um right. sometimes did. um but uh, at the end of the day that did take a toll because she was raped she was by herself she was a student that just came from india and she had no other place to go so and i was all the way here in surrey so that was it was hard because it's like how am i supposed to help the person and when people message me saying like they're about to commit suicide they're suicidal and it's like three in the morning i have to get up right away and start responding and they're like hey are you okay i need to get non-emergency on the line just in case i feel like hey this might go further because they're messaging me for help and i have to respond like it's mm -hmm. there's so many emails like i need to make sure i'm on touch so that's why i say I need more help now. I need volunteers. I'm going to be bringing up a thing where I'm going to get volunteers to come forward that are educated in the social work field, that have diplomas of some sort, and that can keep confidentiality and where I can actually take these victims 
victims and give them to different people. Because me, I'm one person dealing with all of it right now. And I feel like the more people we have in the community that can help, the better it will be, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And that that is what community is about. Now, I am a registered sick music therapist. You have my support. I'm there for you because this is a collective movement that we are responsible for. So whatever I can do, it's done. Okay. But everybody else out there who is tuning in, we need your support for the core movement. We need this movement to reduce, as Gurpreet so beautifully said earlier on, it's we don't want to see those cases increasing. 15,000 emails in a year. A year and a half, about 15,000. Wow. That's why I say, like, we need to start doing something. Um, I'll, I'll make sure, like, the security clearance and checks are made with the people that are going to start helping. But again, this is not a payment. I don't get money to do this. This is all a seva. So the people that are getting coming forward and helping they have to be passionate they have to be the ones that are willing to help and take time out of their life i spend 12 hours at least a day on this page i spend at least 12 hours a day on emails so that's a lot of my time and i'm not getting anything for this so people need to realize like when they're giving their volunteer they're coming in it will be a lot to handle and i'll break it out a little bit right but it's not easy reading these stories. It's not easy dealing with this 24 seven type of a deal. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at the same time, we need to be strong when we talk to victims as well. We can't we can't be the ones that start crying because it's their turn to cry and their turn to heal, right? We have to be their strength and their courage. And that's the yeah. whole point of the movement. And it's to motivate people to make sure that they're out of toxic relationships, to make sure that they're feeling okay, they're not suicidal, they're out of depression, and they're happy and they're living. Because you know what? You live once, you have to be happy. Like, mm -hmm. I feel I laugh all day long. I deal with all these issues, but I watch comedy shows, I laugh, and I live my life at the same time because life's too short, right? But that does not mean we don't help strangers anymore. We need to be stop being selfish. I feel like mm -hmm. we have forgotten what humanity is, mm -hmm. and we focus more on ourselves, and we don't think about others around us. And I feel like one act of kindness and just talking to someone does change and make a difference in someone's life. So mm -hmm. your messages that you even put under comments, Yo, those victims are reading, they're healing, you're helping. You're helping as a community he help someone heal. That's a big thing. So remember mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah. It's so beautiful. I'm so proud of you. I want to reach in through the screen and actually give you a hug because <laughs> this is incredible. You're so brave. And you show that spirit of a God. And I hope that that inspires other people who are listening, who are watching to come forward with their stories or if you've never experienced this I'm glad you've never experienced this but if you're able to come forward and volunteer and support the movement how can they contact you so I have an email um the core movement at gmail.com you I don't respond to dms right now there's way too many I've lost count so all the emails are the best way to like get in touch with me so info at the core movement.com and or the core movement at gmail.com and I'll try to respond as fast as I can. Cool. Um, that's like the main way right now. And I am making a website. Um, so it will be getting bigger. It'll be more easier to get in touch with me. But so far that. And one more thing I would like to say is don't be scared to go approach your abuser. Sometimes we feel that we have the strength in us, but we do. So mm -hmm. going and approaching abuser just because okay it wasn't reported um the person didn't go to jail they're living freely but don't be scared to go right to their face and slap them in the face for what they have done because you know what they deserve it sometimes Absolutely. physical abuse is okay for yourself and your health because at the end of the day at least they won't do it to someone else and tell other people around you that that person has done that to you because then they'll be aware of that person because we always think that that abuser has only abused one person but it's usually several especially if they have gotten away with it yep. so have that you have it it's the inner strength we all have mm -hmm. it we're just yep. too scared to use it. Don't be scared. There's nothing to be scared about. Because at the end of the day, what happened to you is real. It's true. Who cares mm -hmm. if people don't believe you? You believe in yourself. You know what has happened to you. Take a stand for yourself. And mm -hmm. we're here to support. I'll guide. There's other other um, organizations that will guide. Like, you know, it's as a community, we have to take a stand. That's the only way these abusers are going to decrease. 
Absolutely. I agree with you. We have to stand together. Um, I just put the e email address into the comments and we need your support. We would like everybody in this space, in this community to please email info at thecoremovement.com to get involved and be ready to help make this change. And I think it's really important to address the fact that nobody ever does this once. That's the thing. Like we think, oh, it's a one off. It's only happened to me. I don't need to say anything. If it's happened to you or you know that somebody has done something like this, there's a guarantee that they will do this again. And you have a responsibility to do something about it. Yeah, exactly. We don't want more victims. We want them not to happen. And if you keep silent, another victim is going to be victimized, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want that happening. We don't want it to be a circle. We want to break that circle. Yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. And there are other places that um, offer support. I'm going to pop it into the comments. The Sick Family Centre, they offer great support for victims of all different types of abuse and trauma. Um, and they've got a great support network. So please reach out to them. You can reach out to Core Voices, but Core Voices and the Core Movement are now together. And yeah. we're going to stand together to not just expose what's going on, but as you rightfully said, is to help victims and survivors to be able to live normal lives and get past their trauma and not have to be hiding in shame. Exactly. If their family members can't help them, we can. So let's just say strangers helping strangers. It's a good thing. It's good karma. Do it. And you know what? Like you are helping save someone's life by just talking and listening to them. And yeah. uh, and all of that does matter and I feel like as a community the more we get together and the more we talk about this the more awareness is going to be raised and the less victims are that are going to start happening less and less that's all we want now right absolutely and how do you see the future of the core movement like where do you see it in the next year um so the people that say it's for fame I want it to be famous I want it to be huge I want it to be worldwide I want it where everyone can, can connect in every place right now i have the core movement australia i have the core movement uk those are individuals that have been helping the core movement cali um they've all been helping we want more of these to start we want more people being helpful with each other helping random people and now this is the core movement foundation so let's just see how far this will go make it a website and we're People are just helping each other without asking for money, without asking for anything in return. So an actual true seva. Yeah. That is beautiful. I, I don't have any words except for thank you for what yeah. you're doing. Thank you this for like helping us to believe in the ethic of seva again, to know that there's people out there like you, strong yeah. guards who can step <laughs> into the front line and fight the battles that need to be fought and just know that we're with you. Thank you so much. Now this core movement has become a foundation. It's recognized in Canada, but we want it recognized everywhere else too. So we're get, it's slowly getting there and it will get there. So thank you for having me on this platform. It was really nice. Thank you. This is your space, okay? So I want to have you back again and I want you to tell us where you're at and what support you need from us. And I'm calling on everybody in the Core Voices community to reach out to the core movement and give your support, give your time, give your energy to help victims, help survivors and get this message out there so we can reduce the amount of victims. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gurpreet. You have been fantastic. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Core Voices.